Pregame.com. Welcome back to Pregame.tv. Thursday night college football action. UNLV running Rebels at Minnesota. Yes, guys, the uh, Tuesday crew did this game, Fezzik and uh, VR, but they did the total. I'm here to talk about the game. And, Ken, we're here in Las Vegas, obviously, so we're going to be doing a lot of videos, unfortunately, involving the UNLV running Rebels. And the general consensus around town, everybody loves the UNLV team over that season win total. It opened up at two and a half and every sharp in town pounded the over two and a half. Now it's uh, what three and heavy juice or even three and a half. Three and heavy juice uh, as far as Cantor yeah, yeah. Uh, minus 330 on the juice yeah. but LVH opened the win total at four and a half. So you actually had a game and a half middle by the time LVH came out with their uh, their their line. Yeah now a lot of enthusiasm with the Rebels. And, you know, I'm hearing talk all week, and I'm, I'm going to be in a minority with my pick on this game. I know that. Everybody's talking about the triple overtime game last year. They're talking about the revenge. And, you know, UNLV should have won that game in the second overtime, uh, this, that, and the other thing. My problem is this. They got outgained by 200 yards in the game. They were even, they were lucky to even be in overtime. So all this, they should have won in overtime. Yeah, they should have when they were in overtime, but they should have never been even close in this game last year. And both teams are bringing back, you know, basically everybody from last year. There's only two differences from last year to this year. The game's not at UNLV Sam Boyd Stadium. It's in Minnesota. Huge difference. It's on turf. Then you look, last year Minnesota, for the first time in several years, made a bowl game. Now, this is something I'm going to talk about a lot early in the season when you've got that first game of the season. Teams that went to bowls mm -hmm. versus teams that did not go to bowls. That's like having how many extra practices over the other team. So, again, where did this gap close from last year to this year that UNLV is going to, you know, erase that 200-yard deficit? Well, Marquise Gray's not there. That's a, I mean, he played the, that game against UNLV. And Marquise Gray, the sad thing for Golden Gopher fans was that he never was 100% last year health-wise. And so you didn't get to see the true explosive kid that you saw the year before that showed so much potential. Uh, uh, they still they're going here's the thing when you're and I called college basketball for eight years when you're from a smaller mid-major conference and when I call games for Long Beach State Big West even going into Carbondale against Southern Illinois Missouri Valley not a major conference but still they're the big game in town there in, in Carbondale you're not getting a call if there's a questionable call the Big Ten team's going to get that call on their home field then you bring in the track record that UNLV is 0 and 22 on the road under Bobby Houck so again when in doubt, calls are going to go against the Rebels. And I, I'm not saying, you know, they're going to purposely go, but if there's a questionable call, more than likely going to go with the Big Ten team. Yeah, well, I'm glad you pointed out because one of the things I had in my notes is also in last year's game, the 200-yard, you know, deficit, to, you know, Minnesota out gaining them. Minnesota got flagged 11 times in that game last year, too. So the flags were falling against Minnesota at Sam Boyd Stadium. And that irks Jerry Kill, by the way. And by the way, there's a great article Rick Riley wrote on ESPN about Jerry Kill and the seizures and how he's been so uh, proactive now after kind of trying to hide these epileptic seizures that he's had because he's come out and he's basically been like a, a poster guy now mm -hmm. to try and help others that go through the same, uh, you know, serious thing that he goes through. Well, he's got the Minnesota program going, you know, in the right direction. This team's heading, you know. Everywhere where he goes, he's, you know, he's picked it up. You know what? We, we kind of kicked this one around. Let's go ahead. Let's make this one official. Go ahead. All right, UNLV brings back nine starters on both offense and defense, but this is a defense that gave up 30 points or more nine of 12 games last year. Now they got to go to Minnesota, a team that put up 478 yards of offense against them last year. I like Minnesota at home, opening the season. As I said, they went to that bowl game last year. That got this team an extra month of practices when you've got a bowl game. That's huge for teams, especially when you you have a coach like, you know, Kill that's coming in there and now you've got your program going in the right direction. You've got more practice. Your players are used to your system. This is a program that's heading in the right direction. Are they going to compete, 
you know, for a Big Ten title? No, but they are going in the right direction. And even being in the bottom of the Big Ten is much better than being anywhere in the Mountain West, especially a team like UNLV that's going to be in the bottom half of the uh, Mountain West Conference. Uh, I believe that this line is too low. This line has come down to 14. Now, there's a couple 14 and a halfs floating around town, but the majority of the houses still have this game sitting at 14 because they have taken UNLV money. I think everybody's buying into the fact, and we all know it, that if Bobby Hawk doesn't win and everybody loves him they think he's a great coach it's just hard to win with this program we've got one of the worst facilities in college football I, I can't sugarcoat it they need better facilities to attract people to come here but if he doesn't win he's gone unfortunately so people are buying in that that's a driving force well you know what Ken I want to hit the lottery too that doesn't mean it's going to happen you know you got to deal with reality and I just don't think UNLV is ready to compete with Minnesota the speed that Minnesota has I think when this game gets late and you're trying to run out the clock that speed you break one you can add to your lead uh, with this team and I don't see UNLV being able to come back home opener and the fact that they play Played to triple overtime last year. Hey, yeah, it's a revenge game for UNLV. But on the same token, being that bigger school, Minnesota, you almost lost to UNLV last mm -hmm. year. You're going to be focused for them. I've got a Minnesota rolling in this one, 34 to 16, covering the spread here. Take Minnesota. That's my free play uh, for Thursday night. We're going to be back. Ken's going to have a free pick on Saturday. Actually, pretty good ball game. BYU and Virginia. That's up next here, pregame.tv.